Maths is the art of giving same name to different things. Hello everyone, I am Riri Chanchlani, class 8E, roll number 40 from Carmel Convent Senior Secondary School, BHL Bhopal. And today we are going to discuss on a very similar and familiar topic that is how maths is related to art. So in everyday life, we come across many different kinds of arts going on around us. And in that, we find one similar thing that is, in everything around us, maths is related, indirectly or indirectly. So today we are going to specifically focus on one type of art that is jewellery making. And in that, we are going to see how the jewellery of Manipur is made with using maths in it. So, Manipur is a very beautiful state in, Madhi in India as it has Imphal as its capital. So let's begin and see what are the materials used and how maths is related in it. So the materials here needed are paints, powder, shilkar, a pencil, compass, scale or ruler, a scissor, two paint brushes and some kind of decorative items to just to decorate our jewellery. So first of all, let me introduce you. She is Sanvi Singh Rajput from class 8E and she also studies with me in Carmel Convent Senior Secondary School, BHL Bhopal. And today we are all going together to explain you how the jewellery of Manipur is related to maths. So she cut the shilp car and we got two different kind of pieces. In that we have two different kind of clay which we have in equal ratios. Now why in equal ratios? Here, mathematics is used. So let's see how she mixes these equal ratios with it. So these are the two equal ratios we have got. This is because the ratio is one is to one. So that they mix together and the equal amount of both of them can be used. If we increase the quantity of one, the whole Shilpkar will be distorted or the jewellery which we are going to make will be of no use as it would be more harder or it would be more softer. So to make it moderate, we need maths that is we need ratios so that we have the ratio of 1 is to 1 so that they are equal and appropriate. And we need to mix it in equal ratios also so that they are equal. Either we can cut it into different parts, that is by using fraction, we can cut each and every part and mix them together. Or we can have equal ratios so that they are finally at the end, they become like this, an equal round figure so that we can use them easily. Now she has sprinkled a little bit of powder just to make it easier for her to make. So we'll mix it and we'll mix it with the powder so that it becomes soft. Now she is using one kind of figure that is very similar to us that is she is making a circle. Now again you can notice that maths is used here. She is making a circle so that it is easier for her to like just press it up and make it. Now as we know that making the circle the first thing is we need to decide the diameter and the radius of the circle. So she has taken the diameter as around 3 cm and the radius she has taken as 3 and the diameter would be 6 cm. Now she accurately marked the points. Now to make the circle in equal proportion so that it looks beautiful, she has made different points with using the radius so that it looks similar and beautiful. It's really a tough job. We need to have some kind of patience so that it easily goes on. Now as the circle is completed, so she'll remove the extra part so it becomes equal. Now again she has taken a similar shape that is a circle and she is putting a similar kind of thin pin in it. So she has made a circle and again the hole is of circle. As we know that there is a point which we study that on a plane surface there is a point. In the same way she has made a small spear in it so that it attaches to the necklace and we can easily join the beads to it. 
Now you can see that she has used a similar figure that is a triangle or in the 3D figure you can call it as a cone. Now when we have to in make it a designer one we need to use specific points because we can't make it in a half as it may. We need to make it systematic. So here she has taken ruler and she has taken different kind of points and measured them so that they look similar and beautiful because when we make it somewhere here somewhere there so they don't look good. Now as she has divided into different segments so this is looking more appropriate and after that it would be easier for her to decorate. So she has taken equal segments and equal points so that it is easier for her. Now as we know everybody could guess this is a small point or a dot which we make so she is making it just to make it more beautiful. So she has done it with a small pin so that it becomes equal. Now it was easier for her to make it and make it in a designer way as she had divided into different segments. So her segments from whole circle she used mats for it. Now she, she is uh, dividing the point that the leftover part into different beads as she needs to make the beads so they should be equal in size because one should be big one would be small it would be difficult for us to wear so we divide it into equal parts so that they look similar and also they look beautiful so everything dep depends on mathematics and beauty because when we disturb the segments when we disturb the length the beauty of that necklace will be gone so it's of no use after that people are attracted towards the beauty of jewelry only when they look attractive and beautiful and that is when we make it in equal segments and equal parts. So now she has used a very similar figure which we all know that is a cube or we can call it a cuboid but here she has used equal lengths and equal height so it, it's a cube. Small cubes she will divide it into different segments and she has also used circles for it. So hair mats is used as we know that there are two types of figures in it that is a sphere and a cube. They are three dimensional figures and if you talk about two dimensional then it would be a square and a circle. Now she again divided them into different spheres. She put the point so that the thread can easily go into them. She measured the breadth, the length of the string so that the sphere can easily penetrate that. Now the most important task comes here as she is painting the necklace she needs to know the volume she needs to cover by painting it. She needs to know the volume and the area. Accordingly she decided the paints. As she had the blue and the pink color in equal ratios and equal amount and the volume required to paint this, the area required to paint this, as she knew the volume she could easily guess what kind of paints she has an educate amount. So this is how it makes at the end. These strings which she has used to connect them is a she took the length of it so that all the beads come in together that necklace the big one the big circle comes in together and we can easily wear it. So here also we used mats to calculate the length and to have a rough idea about how much centimeter how much meters we need to use for making it. She measured the area of her neck and through that she related it how big the length should be so that it easily gets fit into our neck. So at the end, after using all kinds of mats in it, we got a beautiful necklace. And if she would have not used them, it would not look that beautiful and not that more attractive. And they would be in a half as it manner. But as she used mats, she could equally and easily find out the different ratios, the different lengths, the different kind of shapes she, she used and the different kind of lengths she needed for making it. So the, this we can prove that in everything around us we need mats. So at the end we can show you the jewellery which people usually sell and you buy them. So this is how they use mats in each and every aspect of making it. Thank you. Thank you for listening us so patiently and have a wonderful day ahead.